Over the past seven years, I filmed and posted nearly 2,000 videos to YouTube, with each project ranging from 25 gigabytes to over 150 gigabytes, which means I have had to manage roughly 175,000 gigabytes of data over the past seven years. And on top of that, in recent years, I've needed to keep my footage exceptionally organized while hiring semi-remote video editors. And let me tell you, I've made a lot of mistakes. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the system and hardware I use that doesn't break the bank and provide some context on why I landed on this specific workflow. The best part of my system is that it works on any budget. You can get started right now for less than $150, but it scales to store thousands of dollars worth of data over seven plus years. Huge shout out to Best Buy for sponsoring this video and sending over the Crucial X9 Pro portable SSD two terabyte version. More about that later to come in the video. Now, before I continue, head down in the comment section and start a comment, write out your current system even if it's not a system, just think about your habits. This will help you identify what your natural inclinations are and how to channel those into an effective system as we move through this video. Also, how much data, you can estimate, doesn't have to be perfect, how much data do you create on a monthly basis? Please do this. I think if a lot of people comment below, it will help others with their system so we can all work together in the community. Now, here's what mine looks like. I film. I recently added an additional Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So now I'm filming on three cameras, requiring an SSD for each one. Now each camera captures about six gigabytes per minute. Now times that by three cameras, you have 18 gigabytes per minute. And I usually end up filming for about 25 minutes per video, which equals about 150 gigabytes per camera. Now the footage moves on to editing. I usually film four projects per week. Each project is roughly 450 gigabytes. I can safely use one two terabyte SSD for filming. Now this for me has always been the largest time constraint. To transfer 150 gigs of footage from one filming drive to the editing drive takes eight minutes and 28 seconds give or take. The drives I've been using can transfer 540 megabytes per second. That makes my footage transfer time from the entire filming day, four projects times 450 gigs, one hour and 45 minutes of transfer time. A few weeks ago, Best Buy sent over the Crucial X9 Pro portable SSD, two terabyte. The increase in speed I have seen with these drives is more than two times faster than what I've been using in the past. The X9 Pro has a transfer speed of 1,050 megabytes per second. I'm able to transfer 150 gigs of footage in three minutes and 57 seconds, which means my total transfer time for the entire filming session is now 48 minutes, less than half of the time. So I wanna give a huge shout out to Best Buy for sponsoring this video, but even more so, I'm grateful that they sent over this Crucial X9 Pro and they saved me over an hour in transfer speeds each week. Now these drives are on sale January 27th through February 10th. You can get $72 off, which makes the Crucial X9 Pro $127.99 over at bestbuy.com. So definitely head down in the description below, click those links if you're interested in. Okay, let's move on to the review and go live section. Now this is the part of my workflow that usually takes about one to two weeks. Since I like to be filming every week or every other week, I need about five editing drives, which allows me to not rush through any of my projects. So in total, I use eight SSDs to manage my workflow. I can hear the skeptics in the comment section already. bro. Why not just upgrade your internal storage on your laptop? I mean, seriously, dude, like who needs 450 gigs per week? Okay, so let's see if this is possible and the cost associated to upgrading the laptop's internal storage. To purchase an eight terabyte M.2 SSD, which is what I would need to manage two to three weeks worth of projects, ranges from about $750 to $1,200 all at one time, one purchase. And to upgrade your precious, MacBook Pro will cost you $2,200. And I would still need drives for my editing, which keeps me far more organized. Also, I built this system over time, which you can as well. So perhaps you can maybe start with one or two portable SSDs and then build your system and build the complexity over time like I did. Okay, but what happens to all that footage once I'm finished posting my videos? Well, I'm so glad you asked. 
what to do about long-term storage. I learned early on that I actually didn't need to keep all of my B-RAW footage, the 450 plus gigs a week. It would never get reused, which is why keeping that footage off of my laptop, desktop, or long-term storage drives is so crucial. No pun intended. Head back to the comment section right now. You, watching this video, head back to the comment section right now, edit your comment, and take a moment to write along with me what you need to keep long-term and what you can dump without any consequence. Okay, so what do I need to keep? I need to keep general laptop B-roll. That's basically all the B-roll so I can reuse it for videos in the future. Thumbnails, both designs and images. Brand deals. I like to keep full brand deal projects because sometimes there's oh crap changes after a video has been posted or I have to go back and re-edit. And then branding, that'd be just like portraits or website assets or YouTube assets that I use on a regular basis. Now, what can I discard? I can discard the full B-Raw talking head footage, which I mentioned is anywhere from 150 to 450 gigs uh, per week or per project. Benchmarks, I don't need benchmarks moving forward because I'm gonna do new benchmarks when I benchmark new computers. And then lastly, specific video B-roll. That's really focused for only specific videos. I tend to collect more than I need. So I use a hack in the project manager of Premiere Pro to package only the footage that I used. So what you can do is go into the project manager in Premiere Pro, package the project, which will keep only what you used, and then you can take that project and save it in your long-term storage. So that's a little hack to save what you need and discard what you don't. What about you? What did you write down? This system has allowed me to minimize my long-term storage needs to about two terabytes per year, rather than two to four terabytes per month. All right, now I know you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Ben, this all sounds great, but I don't love carrying extra drives with me because, okay, yeah, you get them all plugged in and they're, they're fast and they're, flexible and they can go from computer to computer, but then they're just kind of always dangling around here, just kind of a nuisance like in my way. I've got a quick hack for you. Just basically take one of these, you know, sticky pads and apply it to the back of the drive. And immediately your drive is nice and secure organized, out of the way, not falling off your desk, good to go. And there you go, no problems at all, super easy to use and pops on and off with ease. I've seen people use magnets, but the problem is you have run the risk of demagnetizing and erasing all the content on your drive. I see people use double-sided sticky tape, but then you have to put sticky tape on the lid of your laptop. So these little suction cups work magic. As I promised in the intro of this video, let's talk about how to store data on any budget, now and long-term. So here's the super budget-friendly option. When I was in college, I didn't have a lot of money. So I would buy flash drives, say like 25 to $50 per drive, as I needed to back up projects. I was also a graphic design student, so my projects were really not larger than say five to 10 gigabytes. So a 32 to 64 gigabyte would go a decent way. Although they were the cheapest option, they would fill up quickly and were slow at about 40 megabytes to 100 megabytes per second, like transfer and read and write speeds. And I had to purchase so many of them that it came to the point where if I have just purchased a larger and faster SSD, I would have had much longer term vision and would have saved myself actually money in the long run. Now here's the more budget friendly combo. If I were smart, I could have combined a desktop hard disk drive with say one to two flash drives and created a more robust system. But nowadays that doesn't make sense anyway because there are faster, cheaper, and more reliable solutions. Now here's my scalable system that I use today and moving into 2025. With storage space becoming increasingly more affordable over the past five or so years, I'm going to help you build out a storage system that will grow with you. First, the hardware, and then the super simple folder structure that will last you years and make things easily accessible. Now, first you need a portable SSD. Like I mentioned, the Crucial X9 Pro is fantastic and on sale right now. Get it for $127.99. If you're a designer, photographer, artist, or even videographer, this should last you six months to a year before it fills up. And the transfer speeds that I mentioned earlier are super fast. Something worth mentioning, because not all companies do this, it comes with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 cable. This means that the drive is actually able to utilize all of the speed capabilities it promises. So make sure you use this cable if you get the drive. As a comparison, I tested a few other devices in my office that I've used in the past. 
and the Crucial X9 Pro beat all of the portable SSDs. You can see the transfer speeds listed up on the screen. The only thing that was faster was an M.2 PCIe NVMe that was put into an enclosure. And um, that's just nature of the beast. That's what they're built for. However, these are not as good as run and gun, everyday carry, durable, portable SSDs. So keep that in mind. And I must say, as far as the design is concerned, I really love this crucial drive. Aluminum top cover, rubberized bottom, so it does not slide around my desk or get knocked off easily. But if it does, it is dust, water, and drop resistant up to seven and a half feet or two meters. Trust me, I need these extra levels of protection. I tend to be kind of clumsy with my, my text. It also comes pre-installed with password protection, which for me is really important since more recently, I've been working on some projects that are actually pre-embargo. So if anybody were to get a hold of that, I could get in some serious trouble. As mentioned, if I was on a budget, I would start here. I am able to smoothly edit massive 6K resolution projects directly on the Crucial X9 Pro. Now, as far as long-term storage, let's talk about a drive enclosure. Once you fill up your portable SSD, I would move on to building out a drive enclosure. I would highly recommend building an M.2 dock if you have the budget. They are fast and more reliable for long-term storage. But as I pointed out earlier in the video, large M.2 drives are more expensive compared to hard disk drives, so it may be out of your price range. Average cost to get started with one eight terabyte M.2 drive and a dock is around $800 to $1,200. To be honest, when I built my enclosure, it was out of my price range. I went with a four bay drive enclosure with an eight terabyte hard disk drive. Now this costs about $300 to $600 depending on what you get. Now as a disclaimer, I did not build a RAID, a redundant array of inexpensive disks. That is a data storage system that combines multiple drives into one unit. RAIDs are used to ensure that your data is not only stored, but backed up across multiple drives. In a tragic situation where a drive fails, the RAID relies on redundancy to ensure you don't lose your files. I didn't need that because in, you know, one to two to three years, I really don't need everything on this anymore. So it wasn't priority for me, but it might be priority for you. So you may consider building a RAID system, but that's not what this video is about. I'm able to keep my desk super organized and have access to 32 terabytes of long-term storage that's super fast, rather than having to plug in each one of these, whoops, <laughs> and they're, yeah, they kind of fall over easily, rather than trying to plug in each one of these every time I need access to my data. Like I said, I'm kind of clumsy with this stuff. Now between the portable SSDs and the drive enclosure, I was able to find my personal mix between the number of working SSDs I need on a monthly basis and utilizing my long-term yet easily accessible storage. Now let's quickly talk about organization because it's insanely simple. Now, how am I able to stay organized over a long period of time? It's insanely simple. Here's my structure. Go ahead and have the top level folders in the drive either named by you know project, business, or a specific category. From there, just go year, then the topic, or you know for me, it's video, and then the individual assets. This will help you stay super organized as you add more drives to your enclosure. Now, this is the final edit to your comment below. What have you decided to do for your working storage and long-term storage? I'd love to know, and you will be a huge help to others watching in the community trying to make a decision for their needs. Remember, there are links in the description below to check out the Crucial X9 Pro portable SSD. It's a two terabyte version to get started with your short-term and long-term storage needs. I'll see you guys in the next video.